Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we generalize calculus to surfaces and similar objects. And indeed, in today's part 23, we will introduce the differential for smooth maps. This means, after this video, we know what it means when we talk about the derivative for maps between manifolds. However, you already know, before we start, I want to send a big thank you to all supporters on Steady, here on YouTube and on Patreon. And please don't forget to download the PDF version of this video with the link in the description. Okay, then let's immediately start with the video of today by taking a smooth manifold and the tangent space at the point P. And what you should know is, in the abstract setting, we use the notation TPM. In particular, this means for each point on the manifold, we find such a tangent space. Hence, for point Q, we would just write TQM. So you already see, when considering a map from M into another manifold, we also have to take all the tangent spaces here. Therefore, one has a special definition for that, for putting all tangent spaces together. And I would say the name is also very fitting, we call it the tangent bundle. And also, the notation is very short then, we just write TM. So you see there is no mentioning of the point anymore, because we go over all the points together. And we do that in a disjoint union. And indeed, there are different notations for that, and some just use a dot in the union symbol. Indeed, you could say this is not important at all, because by definition, the abstract tangent spaces are disjoint anyway. However, if you use instead our submanifold tangent space definition, this claim is not true anymore. And therefore, it's always better to use a formal disjoint union anyway. Therefore, I immediately want to explain the correct meaning of this disjoint union. And there I can also tell you that often people don't use the normal union symbol, but this alternative form. However, it's defined by an ordinary union anyway. Indeed, the only difference to the normal union is that we have a Cartesian product inside. We just have the singleton P with the tangent space TPM. So in other words, you could say we do exactly what we see here in the picture, each tangent space is put to the corresponding point. And therefore, I would say this is how you should visualize this tangent bundle. Okay, and now to close this topic, we can also show that this is also a smooth manifold, however, with a higher dimension. And indeed, it's not hard to see that the dimension is just double the dimension of the manifold M. So this totally makes sense, because we have the Cartesian product, so we double the dimension. So, now after this quick definition, let's go back to the definition of a smooth map. For this, we need two smooth manifolds, and let's call them M and N. And now we have learned, a map is smooth if it corresponds to an ordinary differentiable map on the lower level, so when we go into the local charts. And indeed, if we just say smooth here, we could mean C1 smooth, C2 smooth, or even C infinity smooth. And indeed, we make our life easier here by just saying smooth, and actually we mean as smooth as we need it. Therefore, usually, this is no problem at all. Okay, and now we know for each point P and on the other side for each point F of P, we find a tangent space. Therefore, we could say we have a tangent space here on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And now we know these are vector spaces and now we will also find a linear map between them. And this linear map is induced by the smooth map F. In other words, it's similar to a derivative and we call it DFP. More precisely, we call it the differential of the map F at the point P. And now it turns out that the precise definition of this differential is not complicated at all, because we already did all the work for this definition. So it pays off that we have discussed the tangent space in such a detail. However, here please don't forget, at the moment this differential is fixed with the point P. Therefore, it's also included in the notation DFP. And now as we said before, it maps the one tangent space into the other. Hence, we have to write down a definition for what is happening to a tangent vector here. And please recall, a tangent vector for us is simply an equivalence class of a curve gamma. 
And now we simply send this equivalence class to the right hand side. And there we also have to find a tangent vector, so also an equivalence class. And now the easiest way to do that would be to simply compose f with gamma. And now it's not hard to show that this is indeed a well-defined map. So this is something you can remember. If we go back to the picture, we have a curve gamma here in this manifold and then we push it to the right hand side. And with this movement of the curves, we also push a tangent vector from left to right. However, now this means around the point P, we have a linear approximation of the map F. So as we know it from calculus, the linear map given by the differential approximates our original function. And maybe you also remember in calculus we would do that for all points and call the result the derivative of the function f. And indeed we can do a similar thing here and call the result df the differential of f. So it maps the manifold m into the space of linear maps by using a point p and sends it to the differential at the point p. So not complicated at all but definitely something to keep in mind for later videos. Okay, now to get an idea what this differential actually means, let's look at an example. In particular, let's look at submanifolds. We do that because we already know for submanifolds, the tangent space is much easier to grasp. So let's consider M and N as smooth manifolds embedded into Rn. So something we call a smooth submanifold of Rn. Now the picture should be the same as before. We have m on the left hand side and n on the right hand side. And then we have a map from left to right. And of course it should be our smooth map f. And now the good thing is here on the right hand side, instead of our abstract tangent space, we can use the concrete one for submanifolds. And please recall, for this one we had a special notation. Indeed, not so complicated, we just put sub in the upper index of this tangent space. Now, I wrote here an inequality sign, but you already know this is not literally correct, because it's just a one-to-one -one correspondence, because we have a bijection. However, since we have this bijection, we can just identify both things if there is no confusion. In fact, I would say, let's write down this bijection again. However, first also let's write down that the differential dfp is given by this map. So in other words, this is our abstract definition of the differential at the point p. And now with the bijection, I want to make it more concrete on the right hand side. Indeed, this is part 21. The equivalence class can be substituted by the derivative of this new map at the point zero. And zero is just a parameter chosen for gamma being at the point P. So maybe again, here on the right hand side, we have the concrete definition of a tangent vector in Rn, and here on the left, we just have the abstract definition. However, here the point is, for submanifolds, we can make it very concrete. And indeed, we can make it very concrete by considering a C1 map from Rn into R. So you could say, we have very simple submanifolds here on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And as I said, we want a continuously differentiable function here, or in our terms, just a smooth map. And then we can just calculate what tfp of our equivalence class of gamma is. Then, by our bijection before, we can rewrite that as an ordinary derivative. And since f is differentiable, we can apply the chain rule here. This means we have the ordinary derivative of f here, which can be expressed by the Jacobian matrix. And the point we have to put in is gamma of zero, which is, as we know, just p. So in other words, here we just have the Jacobian at the point p. And then by the chain rule here, we have a matrix multiplication with the derivative of gamma at zero. However, there we know, this just represents the tangent vector we have put in. Hence, what we recognize here is that this is nothing more than the directional derivative of f along this tangent vector. Indeed, this claim here is completely correct for the terms we have learned in multivariable calculus. Hence, we can conclude that our differentiable for a smooth map between manifolds is just a generalization of that. In other words, also in the abstract case, this thing here will give us a directional derivative of f. 
And in order to be precise, we also have to fix the point P here. Okay, so in summary, what you should also see here is that the differential is indeed a generalization of the Jacobian matrix, or in abstract terms, of the total derivative that we know from multivariable calculus. This means we do the correct things here, and I would say let's use the next videos to discuss more about the differential. For example, we should check how the differential looks like if we go into local charts with the manifolds. Because there we would also expect the behavior like a Jacobian matrix. Okay, then I would say let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye bye.